So, so how did these models sort of make their way out into sonic information for the listener to hear? Right? Are th are they? <coughs> or is it you know, merely analogies or? Well, they're analogies, uh, and also some of it is kind of blatant. I, I, I guess um. Well, I mean, it's it's the same old Babbitt. Uh, you know, can you hear the, that it's a retro? You know, R.I. <coughs> crack band and you know, if you tease it apart and on upon analysis, yeah, you'll see that. No, but he's talking about not the listener, the composer. Uh, say that again. Well, I, I'm talking about I am talking about the listener to some extent oh. too. So I, it is a kind of. I mean, it's not. I mean, people treat it like it's a value statement. You know, like if if you can't hear everything, then you've done something wrong. Um, that's not well, what I mean yeah, to no, I was just talking about that with Nathan, about Babbitt, and I mean, if you listen to Beethoven's development, do you, does anybody really have the perfect pitch to hear each key that it's going to? No, you hear the relationships relatively. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that this music that I'm making, which sounds ridiculous, and people are going to want to throw uh, stones at me for it, but uh, there's a compression of the intervals that's quite deliberate. They are set apart by uh, different tempos. It's like Elliot Carter and his uh, how he writes string quartets. Each each part is a character in a, in a play, right? It, they're they're defined by intervals from his all interval series. Each part has a different character. So I'm uh, I'm borrowing from these guys. I'm borrowing from these giants and trying to push something further. Um, can you hear this? I don't know. Um, does it diminish it if you can? I thought you were asking about how how that translation occurred from yeah, I mean that's, taking that's that shape and what what is the translation? What do you, I mean, you were saying you used how do the numbers translate to the behavior? To do it. How do the fractal? How do you get so the fractal into? What, what, what's the nature of the model that's happening here? How does how does it take shape in the actual composition of the piece? So, in other words, are you sort of mapping? Um, features of this model onto particular parameters in the music. Well, what and I did that's was the case, I, uh, I took the each tempo and uh, calculated how long it would be in terms of centimeters uh, mm -hmm. on the paper. And then I based the ratio between the 96 and the 76, uh, how many notes those, those would be and how many centimeters that would be, and calculated how many, how literally how long, by using graphing paper, how long each part would be, and I set them, I had to draw each measure in. Hmm. Okay, so I mean, it's that's implicit in the score. I don't know how explicit it is to a listener, but it's that's sort of the same process Nan Caro would have uh, when he did his piano rolls, so. So it, it, it's a concept piece, but it, the parts are actually based on, well, the information, you know. How do you, it's like uh, Satie, you know, three pieces in the, sh in the form of a pair. I mean, does it sound like a pair? I mean, music <laughs> is so <laughs> abstract. <laughs> music is an abstract thing. And uh, Well, uh, so with the, the Satie piece, right, the title sort of gives you the ability to approach that composition and sort of deal with the kind of, you know, the kind of absurdity that he's setting up there. Right, so his message, criticizing Wagner. His, his message like communicates to the audience, right? Which is to say that they can approach it. So you spend a lot of time and you think about you know this particular idea that you're going to use to structure your piece, right? The, the implicit, well, the implication of that is that what you really want is for somebody who's sitting there, sitting there listening to it, to also be able to access that central idea that was important to you. Maybe that's not the case. I think there are probably been some composers that in the past have said, no, nope, that's not important. You just bring your thing and do what you want with this, this music, right? But in the case of Satie, no, it doesn't sound like a prayer, <coughs> right? Well, but he's that's not his form. message. His message, I mean, his message wasn't literally to write a piece that was in the shape no, of the No, he was making pair. fun of form. Yeah. This that's is right. music in the shape of the hyper. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> three pieces in the yeah. shape of the hyper cube. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But your but your message is not that it's absurd to structure something like a hypercube. Your message is no, I want you to hear a hypercube, what it would sound like if it was if it was a piece of music. 
Or is that not your message? Um, what you'd like to say or whatever. I don't know if I'm asking the listener to think of a hypercube. I'm just saying that that was my thought when I was writing it, and I'm basing the parameters on the hypercube and also the fractals in between. Because the fractal dimensions are in between the dimensions, right? One, two, three, four, you have infinite dimensions in between. Those are fractals. Uh, those were just the methods for that I chose for the composition. Now, to, to me, that's as provocative um, as saying that, you know, it, 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 people should be able to hear all of the microphones that I'm referring to, right? But but the it's a similar idea if you can follow my insanely blacked out thought here that like um, saying that that you could hear the structure of a hypercube in a piece of music or that it could affect the structure, um, you'd have a lot of people that would criticize you by saying, no way, nobody's going to sit there and hear hypercube. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and they do that for kind of the same reason that, or at least similar reasons to criticizing somebody for writing music where you're splitting up the octave into like 200 equal steps or something like that. Like there's no way a person's going to hear that. Right? Well, then did you hear his changes when he played Joe? Uh -huh. <coughs> yes, yes, of course. So they no, think I th they're, they're going to be listening for it. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree with you yeah. that... And to say that to criticize somebody and say you can't hear a fifty-three tone scale, that's a little presumptuous. I mean, like take take some actual scientific research and see what human beings can actually perceive. Well that's what this is. And this that would be this yes. is an experiment to find out how much a person can actually distinguish. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So and in what he, he, he set up it. he set up a constraint. I'm gonna work within this. He has no idea what people are gonna hear because it's never happened before. So Lisa, what was your point? Oh the that if the idea there's a difference between somebody's capacity to hear something and somebody intentionally listening for something and I think that the title mm -hmm. is pointing towards to the listening it prepares the listener is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? yeah the title could be an indicator um, prepares listening <laughs> but I think it's this. I, this isn't program music. Uh, you know, I don't even know what a hypercube looks like. This is. It's on the board. It's on the board. It's a very badly drawn one. <laughs> 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 it's just, it's just a so this is absolute music, right? I mean, I, it's just such a. It's just such a well, okay. No, there's well, not. Don't get into the base. Do you do you really hear the storm? Do you really hear the sun? Well, the Beethoven no. six oh. evokes a topic, right? Uh, the storm topic. Yeah. And you and and just like a bunch of you know these Schumann small piano pieces invoke the the sort of chorus topic. I guess what I'm trying to do is right. representation. Trying to represent. But just I, I don't think that's a distinguishing. I mean, we can have that conversation about representation or analogy or mapping. I'm. I mean, I think the proposition is trying to um, use the word poly. Well, microtonal. Okay, we have that, and we have tempi, and now, I think, what interests me about Peter's proposal is trying to link the concept of poly microtonalities with polytempi, which are not exactly symmetrical. A polytempi, you know, with a microtonality, he could go back into 12 to make the contrast. But with the polytempi, there's not a standard like we have. There's not a standard tempo. So they're not exactly matched. However, one of the, um, not, not however, <laughs> that's not the connection. What, what I like is, comes from a criticism I've had of microtonal, which is that um, the focus on the uh, pitch differentiation exists in the realm of the acoustic and the natural and doesn't really tell us compositionally what to do. It, um, a microtonal composition can be in 4-4, four, four, it can have a, you know, all the tr can, usual trappings of conventional music, that's, nothing is dealt with. But here, it seems like the microtonality is forcing, or asking Peter to look at other parameters that the composer has, like tempo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and see if there could be a matching richess, richness. Yeah. As we've learned with microtonality, there's a richess of possibilities. Wow, 
Do we have ideas that are sufficient for them compositionally? Um, and then well, in this case, uh, for instance, with I found actually a use in the rondo form. A what in the rondo form? Use. I found the use ah. for the rondo form. Ah. Because, well, that's a perfect uh, device for me to show. Comparison shopping. So. Yeah, the recurrence <laughs> of something <laughs> for the other parts of the other tunings. Right. For the listener to, to compare yeah. and contrast. So right. rondo form came perfectly. Right, mm -hmm. right. You rediscovered it through yeah. that idea. And also, there, you can use tunings to modulate, as uh, the Arabs do with makan or as the Greeks did with their melos, you know, with their, with their metabole, when they went from uh, one, uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, from one genera to another, you know. But, but okay, so you're a percussionist, and I thought, <coughs> I thought that part of your dissertation in this project is to give to percussion its place in a kind of a, the recess of microtonality. I mean, I'm, I'm really interested in the polytempi idea as being linked to polymicrotonality because suddenly we have rhythm, duration, uh, well, I have also asked to do unusual things. I have a piece I brought with me that's, uh, I call alien music. It's me on drums. I'm playing in three against four against five against seven. And each of the parts <laughs> uh, go into a solo. Uh, in their p respective tempo. Wow, can you hear that? Yeah, and I, and I set it against uh, four other tunings to accompany it. But this piece goes way back before my thesis. This is like from 2002. <coughs> so I've been working on this idea for a long time. You want to hear it? Yeah. Yes. 